Welcome back to Vigor. Uh, I was going to wait a second before starting this episode, but I just wanted to point out, this is what almost always happens in the lobby. You'll notice everyone is ready except for one person. That's just like every single time. I have no idea what the deal is. I mean, sometimes it's two or three people, but no, we, you can never get into a lobby where literally everyone readies up. And one time it was actually me by accident. I was distracted by something else. And, uh, and I noticed at the very last second that I was the one person that had forgotten to ready up. And I felt so dumb. And I tried to do it at the very last minute. And there was actually a bug where the, um, the sort of winding sound that you get from readying up... Um, I should head to the signals detector. Uh, that winding sound that you get from like, you know, holding down, uh, holding down the button. That sound continued throughout the entire match. So I was uh, punished. I was punished for my sins. Okay, I should probably bring up the audio just a little bit. Exaggerate it a little bit so that you can hear things. So I'm listening to like very subtle cues to see if somebody's after me. Now I've I've marked on the map... By the way, these little fish racks are so hard to make the interaction button appear. So I've marked the uh, the signals detector on the map because I think somebody is going to rush it. And so I could just hang out here and scavenge in the area where I spawned. And usually this is what I'll do because if I spawn right next to a good scavenging zone, that's what I'll do. But somebody is over there and they know that I'm here now. And so rather than focusing on scavenging, since, since the signals detector is so close, I figured that it might be smarter for me to focus on that instead. Ah, see, there we go. There's the guy. We're probably going to watch me just get my butt killed. So I'm not even sure if this is going to be an episode. Okay, I saw the guy. He might be orbiting around to try to flank me, or he might just be hanging out behind a rock. I genuinely don't know what to expect. People do all kinds of different things in this game. So I'm trying to stay in a position where I can get cover, but I'm failing. This is a very shallow area. He's probably behind cover watching me right now. Oh, what am I doing? I'm gonna get killed. Oh, this is stupid. But he could also be pushing directly at me where I was. This happened to me once. I saw somebody at the, at the uh, signal detector. And so uh, I took a pot shot at them. And I hit them. So they definitely knew where I was. Um, and then I started circling around to flank them. And they came right at me. And so we actually ended up swapping places. I ended up at the signal detector. Oh, crap. There he is. <laughs> that was a terrible shot. But I was lucky. Okay. So he still thought I was in that direction, so my flanking maneuver worked. That is not common for me, for my tactics to work. I think I lucked out because I was streaming. <laughs> and we got to see a tactical decision I made work. Very often, I'll have, like, multiple tactical options at my disposal. I'll choose one, and whatever I chose... It'll be the wrong one. It'll be the one that I shouldn't have chosen. So, whatever. You've got to uh, you got to give yourself respect for making the best decision you can, even if by chance it doesn't pan out. Okay, so now I'm gonna use a signal detector. And, whoa! Oh, he he set a trap at the signal detector. Oh, that jerk. Okay, people are marked. Okay, there's nobody on this island. Everyone's in the southwest, and there's the one guy in the northwest. This island is mine. I mean, I mean, unless somebody moves dramatically, this island is mine. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna scavenge here. I realize that that's boring. You know, there's much more interesting ways I could spend my time. But uh, this is, this is how I play. You know, <laughs> like if I find out that I've just got a whole scavenging zone to myself, I might as well leave with as much equipment as possible. Oh, wait a minute. This guy had a had a photo. What's on the photo? Okay, so there's a red house in the distance, and there's a buried thingy next to some ice. And uh, that's okay. I'm not I'm not sure where that is. I think it would be hard for me to find that. 
That's fine. I got plenty of stuff here. I've got, you know, unscavengeable fish. There we go. Wait, wait, wait. Coalition just... Wait. Coalition just said that I apparently missed a code crate. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, thank you, Coalition. <laughs> so it took me a while to figure out how to use these. I think Coalition might have just told me that you have to just shift the numbers until they're green. Or they vibrate your controller, both, at the same time. Oh, look at that! Well, this is going very well for me. My inventory is uh, almost completely full. Thank you, Coalition. I appreciate it. But yeah, like, when I... Because they're combination locks, I was imagining they'd be, like, dishonored or something like that. Where, you know, oh, somewhere in the level, there's a number scrawled on a wall. Or in somebody's email, and you have to find it. And that's just how I assumed it worked. Oh, whoop, I gotta destroy some things. Okay, let's just get rid of that. I don't need that. And uh, that's probably not that useful either. And uh, who needs shotgun shells? I never bring a shotgun into this game. Okay, anyway. Doop -a -doop -a -doop. Wait, which of these buildings have I scavenged? I think I might have one more I haven't scavenged up this way. One or two more. So yeah, so this is probably a typical good session for me. Is, you know, I... If I succeed in one conflict, and it's the only conflict I get into, and then I just get to sort of peacefully scavenge a bunch of crap from a map, I'm good. You know, I don't need to get into some massive firefight to feel, you know, satisfied and successful. This is fine. Now, if one of those people who I saw on the map who are just like, they were all clustered up on that southwest island, or that one person who was... Thing is, I think that the one person who was grabbing the container, I'm betting they won't come after me because I think that they just filled up their inventory. I think they'd be silly to try to come after me. Oh, there's another copy of the same... I already looted this one, right? Oh, no, I didn't. Um, they would be silly to come after me because they probably have a full inventory. They're not going to be able to, even if they find some stuff on me, they're not going to be able to carry it. So, I mean, they might. They might come after me, but it seems unlikely. And the other folks, I mean, they're just all, they got to worry about each other, right? So I think I can just run around and just be absolutely reckless and stupid, and that's fine. I can make all the noise in the world. Okay, anything with a white label on it, by the way, looks like an interaction point to me. <laughs> so I keep thinking that things are interactive that are not. And even though my inventory is full, I've got a lot of unfinished stacks that I can pile resources onto. So that's why I can still scavenge, which is nice. Okay, so now I'm headed for the exit. That was the last building. I have no idea if somebody just made a beeline for me and said, oh, you know, that guy who's isolated up there at the comm tower... We should definitely go bother him. Doesn't seem like anyone's coming after me, though. Oh, so Skinny P wants to know, is this on Switch or the Xbox? So I'm playing on the Xbox. It is available on Switch, though. Um, I'm not sure if it's available on any other platforms. I, was, I, I expected to find it on PC, and I was actually kind of surprised that I didn't find it available on PC. So... Okay, yeah, so Skinny P uh, verifies it is on Switch and Xbox only. Oh, I'm so close to getting my beard. I'm so close to my beard. As soon as I level up to level 39, it's beard time. So I think, I think we might need to play another session. I think we need to play another session right now so I can get my beard. I think before the episode started, I think it was Zedric pointed out that I've got the military-grade beard right now. Uh, on my face. That's true. So I just recently went camping. When I got home, I was looking really haggard. Uh, and so I figured that I would... Let's go to field content this time. Oh, wait. No, I gotta empty my inventory of all the garbage I don't want to bring in. So I typically... Just so that I don't have any regrets, I typically come in with just, like, a single cheap, easily replaceable gun. Um, you know, two stacks of ammo and some kind of healing consumable, like a bandage. And I'll replace that bandage with a new bandage. And that's it. That's basically all I bring in with me, so. 
We just did ice and snow. Let's go do a barren mountain landscape. And I like the SKS, partly because I just, in general, love semi-automatic rifles. In video games, they tend to balance them so that semi-automatic rifles do more damage per hit than a uh, than assault rifles. And that's, you know, I don't think that's accurate to real life, um, but it's fun. And so when I do get the drop on someone, like, you didn't really see me shooting well <laughs> against that guy that I fought um, in the... Uh, in that last encounter, I was just firing wildly because I was kind of panicking a little bit. Because my first shot, I intended to be precise, and he moved just as I was trying to uh, to get that shot off, and so I missed him. And uh, and so once I missed him, I was like, "Oh crap! He knows I'm here. I just gotta fire wildly." So I just started firing wildly, and I lucked out, and I hit him. But in theory, I can launch really effective, powerful single shot attacks people's heads if they can't see me and even if they can see me you know firing wildly like that because each shot is so damaging you can fire wildly at somebody with a semi-automatic rifle in a game like this and do remarkably well i'm just gonna pick up these very tiny amounts of resources because i got I don't know, nothing better to do oh so la coalition says that i can apparently click the left stick to create a loadout oh okay I, I'm not going to do it now because I want to keep matchmaking. But, uh, okay, at the end of this session, if I'm not rushed for time, Coalition, I will try to make a loadout. Because, yeah, I bring lately I've been bringing an SKS, two stacks of ammo, and uh, a bandage into every single match that I go into. If there's a quick way that I can get there, I absolutely want to use it. Zedric says, I can't aim with a controller. Um... No one can super well. A lot of the times it's really kind of up to the game to help you, uh, you know, make, make that work. Uh, Call of Duty is incredibly good at it. I think, you know, State of Decay 2 isn't bad at it, I don't think. And, and this game is actually pretty good at sort of giving you the, the assistance that you need to sort of bridge the gap between your thumbs not being great at this sort of thing and uh, expecting your character to be able to make these shots. Oh, look at all these noobs. Watch, I'm going to get placed next to the most experienced character. Uh in this stack and i'm just gonna get killed immediately but there's just so many noobs noobs are great on this particular um map i forgot the name of the map it's f something um because there's a couple of like underground tunnel networks that they get completely confused by uh i mean i remember getting really confused by them myself but once i figured out where they were i know and so you'll when, when there's like a a special destination in one of those tunnel systems you'll always see a noob running around on top of the mountain like where is it i can't find it anywhere <laughs> yeah so coalition says uh if I, that if i get killed it'll probably be one of by one of these tactical shrek guys yeah, absolutely. Okay. Oh, I'm in the middle of the map, of course. Um, you know what? Let's let's go to the signals detector, even though I'm going to be pretty vulnerable doing that. Or I could I could make a beeline for the timed safe, but I think I'd just be going in blind. I'd like to get a sense of where people are. We also this is a really good spot because there's a challenge on right now uh, to dig up empty buried treasure spots and i happen to know there's an empty there's a buried treasure spot right here so i'm just gonna dig it up real quick oh what do you know it's empty but you see like right below my head here i got a uh, little challenge oh hey so this is one of the spots over here where there's like a tunnel network underneath the mountain and this is actually i believe this one yeah this one's actually an exit it's an exit you can close behind you so if you're being chased into this thing, you can lock the door behind you. Actually, the last time I played on this map, they um, the timed safe was in there, and somebody was camping the timed safe. I could I could tell they were there. Oh, I knew they were there because they used a portable. Oh 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 hello. They used a portable signals detector, and so I knew that somebody was close because they detected me with a portable signals detector. Ah, dang. Oh, that guy is totally getting a beat on me. Let's, uh... Let's stay below the ridge. Oh, did somebody shoot at him? Oh, yeah, there's somebody up there. Okay, well, if they're worried about each other... 
I'm just gonna kill. All I wanted to do. Oh, they, did they already use it and now I can't use it? I thought that multiple people could use it. Maybe there's just a cooldown on it. That's probably the case. It's probably just got a cooldown. Okay, but I think if the... It could be that the original guy is dead. In which case, nobody's looking for me. And I can just clear out of here. Okay, yeah. So Coalition says that there's a cooldown. I thought it was just each person can use it once. That's what I've been assuming. But apparently there's a cooldown. So... I guess I'll head this direction. So anyway, I was telling the story. Yeah, I'm just gonna let those people fight each other. I don't care. Um, I was telling a story about the one time that, yeah, the timed safe was in that exit uh, tunnel. And I, uh, and so I knew there was a guy camping it. Like, uh, cause he used a portable signals detector, which detects the nearest person. And so when I got the notification that I had been detected, I knew that he was close to me. And so I did. So basically what he was doing was he was waiting for me to open the time safe so that he can murder me as I, as I emerged. And so I did the running around and I, I think he kind of also expected because the switches for the time safe are often outside the cave. Oh, oh, oh crap. Hold on. Someday I'll finish telling the story, but not today. Oh, there he is. <laughs> okay. He kind of knows where I am now. If that had been a headshot, that would have been amazing. But uh, no, now he kind of knows where I am. So uh, I'm going to go hide. <laughs> he's probably doing what I did and is staying behind the ridge and is oh somebody oh somebody's already looted this place that's boring oh somebody just used the signals detector up there and they know I'm down to, oh I'm just out of the open oh this is scary ah what am I doing Ah! Ah! I gotta get undercover! I gotta get undercover! What's going on? What am I gonna do? Okay, okay. So, anyway. Signals detector guy can't see me here. Guy I took a pot shot at. Might still be up there somewhere. He might have moved. I don't know. Huh. Okay. Anyway, that feeling of like, oh no, oh no, I could get shot at any time is one of the fun parts about playing this game. <laughs> so this guy, he was camping the time safe. And I, um, so I, so I did, uh, I think he was kind of expecting that I was going to go outside uh, to hit one of the buttons. So I think he was camping, like he was probably hiding somewhere, aiming at that switch. But... Because of a glitch, you can actually trigger that switch from inside the cave. So I triggered that switch from inside the cave, ran to the second switch, set it off, went to the time safe, looted the time safe, ran out the door, and I could hear his footsteps running in. Like, he was like, oh, crap, he got the time safe, and he's running. I'm going to come after him. Uh, he's not coming out my door. I heard him coming after me, and so I just went out that exit and shut the exit behind me. And, <laughs> and so he'd been sitting there camping, like, ha-ha, I'm going to murder some fool. I'm going to take all this stuff from the time safe. And then... The exit was packaged right in there with the time safe. So, no, he didn't get his stuff, and I felt very clever. Um, so, that guy. So, the guy that I saw on that ridge, he was probably. He might have just been leaving the area that I looted just there. So, he might have had no desire to go there, actually. So, he could be headed the same direction that I'm headed. All right. There's nobody at the crash chopper. I haven't been paying attention to whether the time safe has been got. I think that's what... Isn't that where I placed my... Uh, oh, do not answer the phone. Um, I think that's where I placed my marker. Yeah, okay. I'm pretty close to the time safe. I've got no idea. I've not been paying attention. I've got no idea if somebody's already gotten the time safe. Ooh. Grease gun. Let me get this sucker already in case somebody shows up close. There are just enough... There are just enough weapons on the map that usually, like, 
I don't understand people who bring, like, two primary weapons. Because you're going to find another weapon. And you're going to want that weapon. And then you can't carry it if you brought another primary weapon. I guess if you just bring a really cheap second primary weapon, that's okay. Okay, I think... I think those lights might be green on the safe. I think somebody might have already got the safe. Sometimes they'll leave something behind. Like if they don't have enough weapon slots, for instance. Okay, another phone to not answer. Yeah, it's green, so somebody already got it. They might have even booby-trapped it, but... Oh, what's this? <gasps> I got a record! Okay. Okay. I've got a record. That means I gotta get out of here. I do not want to lose my special collectible. Okay, to get to that exit, I gotta cross an open field of flowers. I mean, the flowers help a little bit concealing my position, but uh, they don't stop bullets. So let's stay close to obstacles like these tires. Airdrop incoming. Get ready. Where was the airdrop anyway? Okay, I've left it behind. And I'm sorry, I've already got the thing I want. I've got the vinyl. So, I don't need the airdrop. I'm doing just fine. Okay, something's already been here. That sparky thing was the... Um, uh, it was a comm station, one of the things you used to manipulate the airdrop. Oh, where's the airdrop? Oh, there it is. Oh, it's so pretty. Look at that. Anyway, uh, it starts sparking once somebody's used it. So each one can only be used once. Okay, so when will I see crows if this thing is camped? I think I would have already. Right? Because it's, yeah, coming right up on it. Okay, so it's not camped at close range. There could be a sniper, but... Nope! Okay, I'm going to make it. Nice. Somebody else can have that uh, airdrop. I've got vinyl. That's all I need to survive the apocalypse. Oh, interesting. So Coalition said that actually... Oh, man. Because I didn't get in any fights or get anything else interesting, I didn't get enough experience. Oh! I didn't get... I got almost... That was, like, actually kind of a waste. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, apparently I was wrong about that. I, I thought that each of the uh, comm stations could only be used once, but apparently those are also on a cooldown. Okay. Okay, I've got a little bit more time. We've done Anakin, we've done Fjallcotton. Let's do Battery Snowduct. Oh wait, but before we do that, let's check out our, uh, our loadout. Okay, so let's drop that grease gun. Don't need it. Don't need this pistol. Get rid of this. There's all this garbage I don't need. If I'm going to make this an official loadout, let's make it look nice. So let's grab two flat stacks of ammo. Let's grab my usual bandage. And then man left manage loadout. So save as preset. Okay, so this is now my preset loadout. So next time I want to carry an SKS into battle, I can just grab that preset. So, Corndog says uh, the Elimination Mode is kind of fun. Yeah, so I've, I've only played Elimination Mode once. I played a few sessions with my sister, and playing together, being able to coordinate, it was fun. I don't really have much of a desire to play it solo, uh, as somebody who's not really communicating with his team, but playing it uh, as a duo with my sister on a team with other people, being able to communicate with each other, and then, like, gossip about the people who were left behind when we died was pretty fun. Um, so, so, yeah, I, 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 I enjoyed that. So Fanahoon asks, what good does your base do for you? What's the point of upgrading? So for me, the main point of upgrading um, is to upgrade your ability to craft stuff. So the um, like the SKS that I've been bringing in, uh, it's it's not 
it's definitely not an expensive gun uh, in the terms of this game, but it's more expensive than the cheapest gun. So I used to bring in just the cheapest, easiest to craft guns. Um, but as I built up my capacity to craft guns, I became more confident that I could carry better guns with me into combat. Uh, my capacity to craft ammo, you know, goes higher. My capacity to craft consumables goes higher as I upgrade my base. Because uh, one aspect of the base actually unlocks tiers of crafting, which you also need plans and other things to make the crafting actually work. But it unlocks tiers of crafting. And then the other ones uh, unlock sort of um, access to regular doses of, of resources, things like that. Um, and so, yeah, so that's the point. It's like I'm sort of upgrading my latent ability to fund my expeditions. The Coalition is recommending that I try out the FAL, the FAL uh, rifle at some point, that that might be the gun for me. I haven't explored the FAL. I don't actually know. I don't know if I've got a plan for it or if I've got any FALs. I'll have to check it out. Okay, so we've seen me play conservatively. Let's actually try to rush the safe this time, which will probably result in me getting killed. But uh, whatever. It's fine. I have no pride. It's okay if I die on camera with like tens of people watching me. Oh, wait a minute. Hmm. So somebody's going to get to that place before me anyway. So maybe I should do just a little bit of scavenging on the way. Can I climb this? Yes. Maybe I should just do just a little bit of scavenging. So if, wait, is that, what? Ah, oh, anyway. Um, that bottle is often a scavengeable resource. But yeah, so we'll make our way towards the safe. I'll expect that somebody will beat me to the safe. But I might be able to kill them. Or I might find out no one cares about the safe, in which case, uh, that's fine. It'll be mine. Oh, I can hear some subtle gunshots in the background. Oh, yeah, Coalition. I do. Re I actually. Uh, so, Coalition uh, reminded me that there is this one particular. There's a quirk in the loot system that means there's this one particular um, truck that just always has a lot of loot in it. And I, I tried it out at the last time I played on this map. Uh, I played in the summer version of this map, and I don't know if the loot is the same between the two, but definitely in the summer version of this map, uh, Coalition's advice was good, um, and that truck did have a ton of ammo in it. I was very happy. So I'm hearing something in the distance. I'm assuming it's gunshots and not nearby footprint footsteps. Can never be quite sure though. I'm gonna jump out the window. Is anybody coming behind me? Nope. Okay. Let's have a look at the map. Oh, that's right. Okay, so this this safe is actually at the site that uh, Coalition. Okay, it's a time safe got unlocked. That's fine. I don't care about the time safe. I keep hearing very subtle little noises, and they're probably just ambient garbage. But everything makes me think I'm hearing a person. But anyway, yeah, so the site that Coalition was telling me was a good site to scavenge also happens to have the time safe. Oh, so the Coalition said that... Uh, he actually noticed the message that uh, the regular safe was being opened. I did not notice that. I'm, I'm an unobservant person. Okay, so I think that is the building. Oh, oh. Dang it. Crap, I'm out in the open. Did he run off, or is he just hiding behind that truck? He's behind behind the truck. <laughs> sure, that works for me. Somebody else might have also converged on this spot, so I'm probably going to get killed by the fact that I just can't... I can't resist getting stuff! Don't need this. Let's get that. Okay, anyway. Let's get out of here. 
Put some distance between me and the spot where people knew that I'd be in a firefight. Let's go hide in the freaking woods. Listen around me. Okay, okay, so. Okay, good. This was my question. I, this is the map where all of the exits are blocked in the summer, except for one of them. This exit is free, but the other ones are all locked, and you have to like have resources to get out through them in the summer. But in the winter, they're open. So if I can just get out without getting murdered. So the exit that I've marked is the one that's right near where I started out scavenging. So my hope is, number one, that I was the only one who spawned in that area, which means there's no, unlikely to be anyone who started there. And because I already looted it, if anybody else did decide to go there, I like to imagine that maybe they'd leave quickly because they realize I already took all the good stuff. So I think this spot is unlikely to have a person in it waiting to murder me. Um, nothing is ever a guarantee, though. So I'm be cautious. Oh, hey, missed this last time. Oh, I don't care about transmitters. I can make those all day. There we go. I would use that snowman for target practice if I wasn't terrified of getting killed. Um, okay, I don't want to go around out in the open, so I'm going to take a risk. Go into the water where you're kind of a sitting duck. Climb this ladder. Okay, do I see anybody on the horizon? Is there anybody close? Oh, okay, okay. I don't know where a threat might be coming from, so I've got to hide. Ah, ah. Okay, okay, we made it, we made it. Yes! We just got to level 39. <sighs> All right. So, okay, we got some important questions and comments in the chat. Uh, Fanahoon asks, is there a way to tell how many left? So, uh, the coalition, uh, responded that, uh, not really, like, if you use the, the official signals detector, that will tell you how many people are on the map, because you'll see where they are, and you can count them, uh, but that's kind of the only way to get an overview of who is on the map, um, which is kind of neat, because, like, I could be the last person on the map, but I will still be scared, because I don't know I'm the last person on the map. Um, Coalition uh, gave some quick advice. He said that the jammer can hide your location when someone uses a signals detector, which I knew. It says it also serves as an enemy detector since it lets you know when a player is nearby. Oh, that's it. So how does it let you know? Does it just tell you that you successfully jammed a player? Or does it tell you, like, if I've set up the jamming place, does it tell me if a player enters the jamming place? Oh, yeah, so La Coalition reminds me also that if, if I don't see crows taking off from a, uh, an exit, then I know that I'm the only one there. That's true, but the thing I was worried about was being sniped by somebody from who was far enough away not to trigger the crows. That that's always a risk. Okay, yeah, so La Coalition says, says that apparently it will tell you that players have been jammed. If you, so, so basically, if you're not sure if there are players around you, you can apparently lose, use the jammer, and it'll give you like a binary yes, you know, yes or no about whether there are players around you. I guess that the uh, the signals detector will, the portable signals detector will also do that, but I think it's more expensive and rarer, isn't it? Anyway, we just unlocked the military grade beard, right there, military grade Nansen beard. Is this is called a Nansen. Okay, sure, why not? This is mine. I didn't get anything for the Legacy Season, did I? No, I'm still there. But, but, that means it is time, finally, finally. There you go. My red military-grade beard is ready to go. Oh, it's so beautiful. <laughs> I should definitely put this guy on, the, on my thumbnail for this one. Typically, I've been uh, had this very consistent style on my thumbnails for Vigor, where it's everything is sort of like you know, uh, it's got like a white uh, wash to the whole thing because I'm using Vigor promotional images, which all have the same style to them. I might have to make the thumbnail for this one be this guy with his military grade beard, though. Uh, that might have to be where I go. 
Anyway, uh, so let's let's go to my loadout. Okay, let's hit left stick to manage my loadout, and then fill from preset. Look at that! Oh, that was so much quicker than putting all that stuff away. Thank you, Coalition, for telling me about presets. That's amazing. So Fanahoon wants me to show them around my base. Okay, I think I've got about five minutes before I have to go. So yeah, let's. So first, you got your bunker under here. This is where you keep your weapon collection and your crafting table. Most of these sites, uh, all the resource collection sites, like the scrap bin, you have to come up to them in person. But everything else that opens a menu, like the crafting table, it just opens the same cycle menu that you can get to by hitting up on the D-pad. Um, but yeah, it shows me these are the weapons that I've got equipped, which is just the one weapon, the SKS. Uh, but then it's got my whole... These are all the weapons that exist in my inventory, and they've got a blueprint behind them if I've got the plan to be able to make this weapon myself. So yeah, so your arsenal is basically in your bunker. But then this is my house. So your house starts out in way poorer conditions, with big gaps in the walls and a different, like, rotting old yellow paint, that sort of thing. But I've made all of the superficial upgrades to it now. So now it's all beautiful. Uh, the interior is all blue, so it's the exterior. It's still full of... I still eat rats, though. So I feel like, you know, I've spent all this time painting my house, but I'm still eating rats every day. I, I don't know if my... Uh, if my priorities are really in order as a character. But I go down here, got this rat trap here. My electric generator I've still not set up. But yeah, that's it. This is sort of my little base. So I just run around collecting things uh, just periodically, at least once a day. Come in here and just grab the resources that uh, these things get for you. Oh, one thing you can do is donate food. Let me check out my donate food situation. Okay, so I've got... 2,336 food. To hit the next tier, I need to get 3,000. So I'm trying to collect enough food that I can donate even more to get my military crate. Basically, the only purpose of food is you donate it to the poor, and you get crates back in return. So the more food you generate during a week, and uh, the more that you donate, the better a crate you get. So I've, I've donated 2,000 so far this week. I've got five days left to get up to 5,000, which I'm going to do. The question is, can I get up to 10,000? And that I don't know. So... Anyway, I am out of time. I have to run. But uh, thank you all for hanging out with me. Let's wrap this episode up, and then I'm just going to go. Sorry, I usually try to uh, raid somebody. I don't have time to find somebody. We've just got to get out of here. So there's a subscribe button. Thank you so much. I'll stick other links over here, so you can click on those if you want to watch them. <laughs> Vigor!